Naruto's greatest ability that he's ever displayed is not his Shadow Clone Jutsu or his Rasengan. It's generally the more memed about ability that has jokingly become known as Tak no Jutsu. But in reality, this was truly one of his greatest abilities. The ability to understand the villains and connect with them. It was this ability that defeated Nagato, and it was this that brought Sasuke back from his path of hatred. Naruto, with this ability alone, ended an Uchiha curse that spanned thousands of years all the way back to Indra Otsutsuki. To say that Naruto's ability to understand and connect with villains is a powerful one is an understatement, as it more than affects those villains, but it breaks the fourth wall, crossing over the borders of panels and pages to affect the viewers too. It showed us how to be better capable of feeling compassion for others. In the words of my favorite Pokemon theme song, it's not always black and white, but your heart always knows what's right. And this is what it boils down to. Sometimes people have a reason for the path they choose, and maybe that reason is the only reason why they walk this path. Perhaps they would prefer not to be on that path, but someone or something has pushed them down that way. That is what Naruto taught us. But for the sake of this video, let's just say that his Takno Jutsu is turned on him, and manages to flip him to the dark side. Yes, yes, let's do that. It'll be fun. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. So our story begins where you would expect. On a cold October night that should be so joyous. The bringing of a new life into the world, surrounded by love and happiness. But sadly, our protagonist was robbed of that by the very embodiment of Uchiha hate. Instead, our little Naruto was brought into a world surrounded by death and sorrow. But even among this, there was love. The natural love of two parents giving their lives to save him. In the end, he was forced to bear a burden for an ungrateful village that never deserved him. Raised alone and by himself, everything Naruto knew about living was what he taught himself. He was afforded an apartment and an allowance to keep himself alive, but for the most part, he was alone. The third Hokage, like the shadow his title dictated, was always watching him, whether it was around a campfire or sneaking in to make sure he wasn't drinking expired milk, which generally he was. But that was far from the love Naruto needed. From the start, there were those who loved Naruto, but sometimes it doesn't matter if you're loved if you never know it. If all you ever see or feel is hatred, it doesn't matter how much someone loves you from afar, and that is the tragedy of our protagonist. Still, he tried, but slowly darkness began to infest his heart, aided in its growth by the Ninetales who also became entangled in people's hatred. Having no friends, Naruto always tried to be kind and stand up for people. It was an act like this that caused Hinata Hyuga to begin to fall head over heels, but this got him nowhere, as there were those who would rather have nothing to do with him, would have rather that he died. The first time Naruto ever felt really cared about was when the best boy, Iruka sensei decided to stick with him buy him some ramen, when he nearly gave his life to defend him from Mizuki. From there, things only began to look up for our gutsy ninja. He ended up being placed on Team 7 alongside Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha under Kakashi Harake. He did some odd jobs for the people of the village, but it didn't really pick up until he secured their Land of Waves mission, which led to them facing off against Haku and Zabuza, which ended with Haku and Zabuza's death. After fearing that Sasuke had died, Naruto finally awakened his tailed beast abilities and started his path towards becoming a fully realized Jinchuriki. It was how he defeated Haku. Their careers as shinobi began to get a bit more… dull. Well, as dull as it can get with Naruto there. But that doesn't last too long, as their Jonin, Kakashi, feels that they're ready to enter the Chunin exams, which will allow them to ascend to the rank of Chunin if they do well enough. Rock Lee faces off against Sasuke prior to their official entry into the exams, which Sasuke would have lost had it not been for the interference of Mike Guy. The test starts out rather standard, with a written exam that Naruto knows nothing about as he reads off the questions. I didn't know there'd be a test! I didn't study! After answering none of the questions at all, Naruto passes, which even impresses the test's proctor, Ibiki Marino, who had devised this test to measure how much the Genin were willing to sacrifice in order to complete their mission. The second round is the Forest of Death. This is where things start to take a turn for the worse, as Orochimaru, an S-rank missing nin, shows up, intent on taking the body of the last surviving Uchiha clan member. Well, one of the last. Itachi's another, but Orochimaru failed to take his body, which is what led to Orochimaru leaving the Akatsuki, but you get my point. Sasuke is frozen in fear, which leads Naruto to throw the same insult that Sasuke had used on him when facing the Demon Brothers, back into Sasuke's face when defending him. 
However, it doesn't stop Sasuke from getting bit, Dracula style, nor does it stop Naruto from getting his tailed beast flavored fish cake sealed by the five element seal, which restricts his usage of Kurama's power. Both pass out for a time, and it's up to Sakura, as well as Rock Lee, to protect them until they're well enough to awaken and continue their mission which leaves them with very little time to finish the second part of the exam by finding their designated scroll color and returning it to the tower in the center of the forest. They pass this test and manage to make it to the next one, which is an exhibition match. However, due to the events that transpired in the Forest of Death, both Naruto and Sasuke are not in peak physical condition. Sasuke is limited from using his ninjutsu due to how it awakens his curse mark, and Naruto is limited from using Kurama's power due to the extra seal placed over his 8 trigram seal, both due to Orochimaru's interference. Despite this, Sasuke manages to come out on top anyway, after his usage of the lion combo, a technique that he learned from watching Rock Lee's front lotus. This allows Sasuke to win despite his handicap. And Naruto faces off against Kiba, where he passes gas directly into Kiba's face and then finishes him off with his Naruto Uzumaki combo, a ripoff of another ripoff of the front lotus. Due to his handicap, Kakashi decides to help his student out by using the evil sealing method, which does just as the name implies, at the cost of causing Sasuke to pass out from the pain. To keep Sasuke from being tempted to use the cursed seal's power, as only Sasuke's willpower is keeping the seal inert, Kakashi trains him to use the Chidori instead. Meanwhile, Naruto trains with pervy sage, Jiraiya-sensei. Jiraiya was one of the few people in the world that Naruto felt an almost familial connection with. Jiraiya himself was worthy of his title of pervy sage. He was a user of toad-style sage mode, which Naruto would later use himself, but he was also a bit of a pervert. The first time Naruto meets him, he's peeking in on a women's bathing house. At this time, Naruto's original teacher, Ebisu, discovers him, but Jiraiya knocks him out. Naruto insists on training under the toad sage. Jiraiya thinks it's best to focus on chakra control, which he aids Naruto in doing by removing Orochimaru's five element seal, making Naruto summon toads, and later pushing him off a cliff, which, while allowing Naruto to meet Kurama for the first time, and acquire the strength to summon Gamabunta, ends with Naruto in the hospital, where he encounters Gara attempting to kill Rock Lee, who is currently incapacitated due to his previous battle with Gara, which everyone believed would end his shinobi career. Naruto then must face off against Neji, which he barely pulls through due to his being Agent Shuriki. And as Sasuke faces Gara, Orochimaru springs his attack, in which he summons the bodies of Hashirama Senju and Tobirama Senju, resurrected through the impure world reincarnation jutsu to fight the Hokage. However, as a last ditch effort, Hiruzen uses the Reaper Death Seal, same as Minato, to seal Orochimaru away. However, Hiruzen is not as strong as he would like to believe he is, which results in him only being able to seal away Orochimaru's arms. Meanwhile, Team 7 are facing off against Gara when suddenly he shifts into the form of Shukaku. Naruto summons Gamabunta and transforms him into the Ninetales to fight him, and manages to defeat him by punching him in the face to wake him up. With all of this done, the attack on Konoha has ended. However, the Hokage was dead, and Naruto had the burden of watching Konohamaru, the kid he considered a little brother, lament his grandfather's passing. Naruto was later asked to go with Jiraiya to bring Tsunade back to Konoha to be the fifth Hokage, which he agrees to, but is astounded to find that she couldn't care less about being Hokage, to a degree that insults Naruto. She then makes a bet with him that if he masters the Rasengan in a week, she'll give him the first Hokage's necklace as a gift. Tsunade then manages to face off against Orochimaru, who had sought her help after his arms were sealed. Kabuto aids his master in battle and even manages to harm Tsunade, but Naruto joins to help her. It's then that Naruto experiences the closeness of death, when both his heart muscles and chakra pathways were severed by Kabuto. Tsunade manages to heal him though. During the battle, Naruto displays the Rasengan, which Tsunade remembers was a part of her bet with Naruto, and as such, she gives him the first Okage's necklace. It's ironic though that this necklace has found its way back to its original owner, albeit in a different body. Naruto is later challenged by an envious Sasuke to a duel, which is interrupted by Kakashi-sensei, though with the evidence laid bare, Naruto still soundly won. This causes Sasuke to consider leaving the village, which he eventually does. Naruto and a small team pursue him and face Kimimaro and the Sound 4, but the Leaf Shinobi come out on top. Naruto meets Sasuke at the Valley of the End, where he attempts to convince him to come home, but Sasuke refuses in the two battle. Awakening his Cursed Seal's second stage that he had just acquired with the help of the Sound 4, he faces off against Naruto in his version 1 cloak, and comes out victorious. Naruto is then returned to the village without Sasuke. From here, Naruto leaves with Jiraiya to train, and two and a half years pass quietly. Naruto trains with Jiraiya, and Sasuke trains under Orochimaru. However, upon returning to the village, it becomes known that Gara, the current Kazakage of the Hidden Sand, has been taken by mysterious forces, and Naruto and Sakura are sent to find him. In the end, it's found that Gara has been killed and Shukaku stripped from him. 
They fight against Saucery, the Akatsuki's master puppet user, and manage to kill him. And with the help of Chiyo, they manage to revive Gara. They gain information from Saucery that he was planning to meet with Orochimaru, and so the Leaf capitalize upon this by sending Yamato with Team 7 with new recruit Sai to trick Orochimaru in hopes of taking him down and bringing Sasuke back to the village. However, Orochimaru sees through this trick, and Team 7 faces off against him, where Orochimaru pokes fun at Naruto's inability to save Sasuke, causing Naruto to enter his version 2 cloak, which previously he had failed to control, resulting in his own hospitalization as well as Jiraiya's. At this point, Naruto's version 2 is ripping his flesh apart and constantly regenerating it, speeding up the cycle of cell death and regeneration which will slowly lower his lifespan. However, the strength it offers is enough to push Orochimaru back. However, his lack of control causes him to hurt Sakura, and Yamato is forced to use... Here it comes, my favorite part. <coughs> Hokage style, 60 year old technique, entering society with bliss bringing hands. My soul, that feels so good to say. This calms Naruto down, but he is in bad shape, needing to be healed by Sakura. Sai, on the other hand, feigns betrayal to get close enough to Orochimaru in hopes of killing Sasuke, but he doesn't. Eventually, Naruto and his friends catch up, only to see that Sasuke isn't very interested in returning to the village. After a quick skirmish in which Yamato is wounded, Sasuke leaves with Orochimaru. This doesn't last long, as Orochimaru has pretty much gone dry on things to teach Sasuke, and so Sasuke pulls a Tragedy of Darth Plagueis style maneuver on Orochimaru, and kills him while he's resting in his bed. Naruto is also growing stronger. He's training with his Shadow Clones to grow stronger and learn a new technique, which turns out to be Rasen Shuriken. At this time, the Akatsuki are branded as a true threat, and sought by the Leaf tirelessly. Sadly, they found some, and these Akatsuki members killed Asuma, leaving poor Konohamaru with one less family member. Naruto joins the team to hunt down Hidan and Kakazu, and after using his new Rasen Shuriken, manages to kill Kakazu, while Hidan is permanently buried on Nara Clan soil, where his immortality will become a curse. We really need Hidan to return to Boruto Kishimoto. Bring him back. He'd make such a good villain, better than his ripoff. Expand on Jashin lore, please. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. During this time, Jiraiya is sent to the village hidden in the rain to investigate a rumor that the Akatsuki originated from there. While in the village, he comes to realize that its former leader, Hanzo of the Salamander, has perished and was replaced by a man known only as Pain. To his horror, he finds that the Akatsuki are currently being led by his former students, Nagato, Konin, and the recently deceased Yahiko, who is currently the embodiment of Nagato's diva path. After fighting valiantly, Jiraiya finds that he cannot defeat them and is killed. This news hits Naruto like a truck, and he has to deal with the death of his godfather and one of the few people he could consider to be like a father to him. However, Naruto is invited to train on Mount Myoboku by the Toad Sages, where he learns how to use Sage Mode to a masterful degree, even besting Jiraiya. However, at this time, Tobi convinces Nagato that he needs to take a more active role in helping them get the Tailed Beasts, as they've already lost Sasori, Hidan, and Kakazu. Pain agrees, and decides to simply take the Nine Tails from Konoha, and begins his assault. He terrorizes the village and its citizens searching for Naruto, but finds nothing. However, Naruto would return to save the village that hated him so much. Here he fights against the six paths of pain and eventually beats them. He would track down Nagato and attempt to bring him back to the light side. This would cause Nagato to use the technique Samsara of Heavenly Life to revive all of those who died. Naruto would return to the village and be treated like the hero he is. Wait a second. No. No, we won't let that happen. We'll say in this timeline, Naruto is not celebrated. Mm -mm. Nope. What if instead the people blame him for pain coming to the village at all? After all, Pain was searching for the Ninetales, which is Naruto to them. And Naruto did not come out of hiding, and so many people died. Yeah, they returned to life, but their homes, businesses, and entire lives had been turned upside down. And they see this as Naruto's fault. They hate his guts at this point. They boo him and throw trash, empty sake bottles, and rotten food at him. Naruto's confused. He, he just, he saved them, and they hate him for it? It's at this point he begins to believe that there is nothing he can do to gain these people's respect. His dream of becoming Hokage is proven to him to be just that, a dream. A puff of smoke that is quickly flitting away from reality. Danzo is then instituted as the interim Hokage to replace the Komatose Tsunade. A five Kage summit is called and Danzo goes. Sasuke also goes because by this time he has killed Itachi and has come to realize that Konoha ordered it, and is right now on his way there to kill Danzo. Naruto begs the Raikage to excuse Sasuke, but the Raikage refuses. All of this causes Naruto to have a panic attack, which leaves him out of commission for a while. Yamato is supposed to bring him back to the village, but Naruto escapes. 
Meanwhile, at the summit, Sasuke is fighting his way in, and Tobi appears in front of the Kage and demands the Nine Tails. When he's refused, he declares the Fourth Shinobi World War. Sasuke crashes the party, and the Kage scatter. Sasuke targets Danzo, though, and the two get into a battle that introduces us to the concept of Izanagi, which allows Danzo to blur the line between illusion and reality, and allow him to cheat death. Sasuke would have died had it not been for Karin. However, he sacrifices her, or at least tries to, to defeat Danzo. He's then met with Sakura, Kakashi, and Naruto, each of whom engage him in battle. Sasuke comes out on top due to the poison Naruto took in due to Sakura, but he also finds that he's going blind due to overusage of his Mangekyo Sharingan and flees. He would then transplant Itachi's eyes to gain the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto is then sent to an island to train, but it's really to keep him away from the war. This is something he later learns, but not for a little while. At first, Killer B doesn't like him, but eventually they become buds. First things first, before he can conquer the hatred in Kurama's heart, he must first conquer the hatred in his own heart. To do this, he sits in front of a waterfall and prepares to face his darkness. However, his darkness is far stronger than before, due to his treatment after fighting pain. At this point, Naruto can't conquer this darkness, and in the end, it takes over. Naruto is filled with anger and hatred which he can't defeat, but catches Kurama's attention. Due to this, Kurama allows Naruto to take some of his energy, sensing this darkness will bring about a lot of destruction. Naruto, without even training, manages to awaken Ninetales Chakra Mode. This allows him to sense what's going on in the world where he rushes off to face the enemy. Most of this actually stays the same until deeper into the final confrontation. Naruto faces off against Tobi, who has the secrets of his Kamui found out with the help of Kakashi. However, he absorbs the Ten Tails and becomes its Jinchuriki. The United Shinobi forces face off against him, and even to a point, Sasuke helps. But when Naruto enters Obito's heart space to try to convince him to return to the light, the opposite happens. Obito tells him how cruel the world is and that even Naruto knows it. He tells Naruto that he is just like Obito and has a deep darkness in his heart. This causes Naruto to fail at saving Obito. However, in the end, with the power of the United Shinobi forces, they manage to pull the tailed beasts out of Obito. Naruto watches as Kakashi kills him. Black Zetsu appears and removes the Rinnegan from Obito's head and plans to take it to Madara. However, it's intercepted by Naruto who uses Ninetales Chakra Mode to deal with the Zetsu. He then takes the Rinnegan. Kakashi and Sakura cheer Naruto on and ask for the eye, but Naruto hesitates a bit. Kakashi would look to Sakura and Sakura would look to Kakashi. Sakura would speak. Naruto? Naruto would disappear from sight. In the distance, there's the sound of grunting and groaning, and suddenly, Naruto appears atop the Ten Tails, which has been summoned out of Obito. And Naruto stands atop it, his left eye replaced with the Rinnegan. Kakashi asks Naruto what he's doing, and Naruto looks down and doesn't say a word. At this time, Madara, who is yet to return to life, stands there and looks on, finding his plan hijacked a second time by somebody else. He sighs and would join Naruto, standing by his side. An unexpected plot twist, Madara would say. Naruto would look out over the other tailed beasts as chakra chains would extend from the ghetto statue's mouth. Madara would look to Naruto and tell him that he needs to absorb them one at a time. He does so one by one, all while the United Shinobi forces begin to ask Naruto what he's doing. Naruto looks at all of the Shinobi of the Leaf and speaks, This is your own doing. Naruto would absorb the Eight Tails last, and then absorb the Ghetto Statue into his body, where he would then mix Kurama's Chakra with it. He would then become the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. Naruto would then begin to face off against the United Shinobi forces instead, along with Madara's help. He would spare Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi, as well as some of his closer friends who had been the few to actually care about him. But other than that, he would utterly decimate the United Shinobi forces, who had already been stretched thin by fighting Obito. Naruto would then leave the battlefield. The reincarnated Hokages would all be shocked, and Minato especially would be unable to believe this. They would follow Naruto to wherever he was going, only to find that he had gone back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Looking down on the village from high up, Naruto would note every instance that this ungrateful village hated him for sacrificing his body to imprison the very monster that threatened them. Oh, how many times he had selflessly acted for this village only to be despised. He began to regret having been forced to become the Ninetales Jinchuriki and wished instead that the village had been destroyed during this attack all those years ago. All Naruto ever wanted was to be accepted. That's why he dreamed of being Hokage. Not to be in some seat of power or to hold a position he could brag about. He just wanted to be accepted. But that would never happen. Naruto would hover over the leaf all while Madara watches, arms crossed, face twisted in a sadistic smirk. Naruto would hover over the village as people below began to point and cry out. Naruto would look down. For so many years, you all hated me. Everything I ever did was for your approval. I even sacrificed my own safety and the only man I ever knew as a father to protect you from pain in his six paths. And what was I met with? Love and admiration? Acceptance? A tear would drip down his face and hit the ground as his very voice would echo the feelings in his heart. I... 
I just wanted you all to love me. I wanted to be treated like a person, not a demon. But because you couldn't handle my life and alienated me for a living, I have become the very thing you hated. Congratulations. You created your own destroyer. The cries of the village would grow louder as Naruto would drop a truth-seeking ball down in the center of the village, which would explode and eradicate most of the village and its inhabitants. By this time, the Hokages and whatever was left of the United Shinobi forces, being those who Naruto considered friends and had spared, would appear. Hiruzen would be in utter disbelief that the village he loved so much could be done in like this. Tobirama would declare that Naruto was a despicable human being, and Hashirama would remain silent, all while eyeing Madara who was also looking back at him with a grin. Minato would be the first to rush out there. He would call out to Naruto. Naruto would look down at his father. Minato would speak. Son, what have you done? Why did you do this? Naruto would lower to the ground, a single veil of hardened flesh covering his Rinne Sharingan, as a pair of horns symbolizing the devil he had become shone in the moonlight that would soon be stained red with the Tsukiyomi. I am just being the monster you created, Naruto would say. Minato would shake his head. No, I never meant for you to become a monster. I wanted you to save the world, to save the village, not destroy it. Naruto would look down. Maybe that is so, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. Naruto would look up crying. You left me. You died to put this thing in me. Mom died and I know it wasn't her fault, but I needed someone, he would shout out. I was alone. Everyone in the village hated me because of what I was, what you made me to be. Why couldn't you drag this demon in me to hell with you? Minato would look at his son and put a hand on his cheek. My son. I was selfish to expect this of you. I should have known better than to put such a weight on your shoulders. I valued my duty to the world and to my village, and I did not consider how this would adversely affect you. I believe you would be treated as a hero, but they… Naruto would wipe his nose. They cast me aside. I didn't make a single friend. Their parents dragged them away from me out of fear. How many nights do you think I cried myself to sleep out of loneliness? How many nights do you think I considered jumping from the Hokage's monument to fulfill the wishes of those who obviously wanted me dead? Minato would listen, unsure of what to say. Naruto would continue. I tried to be mischievous. I vandalized that damned monument just to get someone to look at me. I spilled my hatred on that rock to feel better and maybe get someone, anyone, to publish me in hopes that they might feel the need to. I don't know, provide a parent that I never had. And that wasn't me, Irika would say as he appeared. Wasn't I the one to punish you, to take you out for ramen, to protect you when Mizuki wanted you dead? Naruto would nod. Yeah, I guess, but I was still alone. Where was my family? Konohamaru would show up. You were my big brother, Naruto. Why would you hurt our village? Wasn't I your family? Sakura and Kakashi would appear behind him. We were more than just Team 7. We were a family, too. You weren't alone. We were with you. Even Sasuke would show up. I find it ironic that you tried to save me from my own path of hatred and ended up walking it yourself. Sasuke would let out a small laugh. <laughs> Maybe you understand me more than I thought. Here I thought it was worse to have love and loss, but apparently I was wrong. Minato would pull Naruto into his embrace. If I could go back in time, I would not have forced this on you. I was wrong too. All I ever wanted was to be your father and the husband to your mother. I would have given up everything for that. I should have. The rest of Naruto's friends would begin to hug him. Naruto would finish breaking down into tears and just openly cry. In the distance, even the reincarnated three Hokage could hear it. Hiruzen would mention to Tobirama that he had failed. He was a soft Hokage. I couldn't even protect one child. How could I be fit to protect this village? Hashirama would shake his head. No, Hiruzen, this is my fault. I am the one who proliferated the tailed beasts. When Madara brought the Nine Tails, I was the one who sealed it into my wife and then spread them among the villages. Minato was protecting the balance I created. Tobirama then spoke. This is all of our faults. We were too busy attempting to protect the peace we had won that we forgot to protect those that this peace was for. As they hugged a bit, more in the center of the crater, suddenly they would hear a voice. This is such a beautiful scene. It tugs on every last one of my heartstrings. But I regret to inform you that I still need that Ten Tails to cast the infinite Tsukiyomi. They would turn to see Madara. He would wave his hand as if brushing the whole situation aside. You want to go back in time, fourth Hokage? Perhaps I have just the thing for you. Reality can often be disappointing. You find yourself unable to do the things you wish you could and find that time passes you by. You're unable to go back and atone for your sins, but that can be changed. All that needs to be done is have Naruto there cast the infinite Tsukiyomi. If he does that, this all goes away. You can enter a world where all of your hopes and dreams come true. You can start over. 
Naruto can grow up with parents and be loved by the village. Sasuke there can live in a world where Konoha never forced his brother to kill his clan. Sakura can have a world where she's married to the Uchiha she so adores. What do you have to lose? Minato would smile. Reality. Madara would raise a brow. Minato would continue. We have reality to lose. This world you plan to make sounds perfect, but in the end, it's no more than just a genjutsu. An illusion. It's not real. The bonds forged there between people will be just as false as the world you have crafted. Reality is better, even if it is disappointing, because at least it's real. Madara would sigh. Hmm, huh, that's fine. There is still one Rinnegan left out there. All I need to do is find someone to revive me and take that beast into myself after you're all dead. They would begin to fight, and Madara would prove to be a true adversary. Even with his Ten Tails Jinchuriki power and being surrounded by everyone else, Naruto would still have a problem dealing with Madara. And given that he was an Ido Tensei, he was, for all intents and purposes, immortal. And he was fast enough to be hard to pin down to seal. In the end, Sasuke would be killed and Kakashi as well. But with Hashirama Senju and Tobirama Senju, they would manage to hold him off. However, he is still immortal. Naruto knows exactly what he needs to do. After everything he has done, everything he's felt, he knows exactly what to do. He uses Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive all those killed in the war, including those he killed in the village. However, he also includes Madara in this number, and as soon as he resurrects, he's run through by Hashirama and Tobirama, which ends his short-lived return to life. However, Naruto falls to the ground. Much like Nagato before him, this ends with Naruto's life being lost. As he lays there on the ground, he's surrounded by his friends who all wish him the best. Even the villagers are surrounding him, realizing that they really did deserve this, and that Naruto deserved none of it. But at this point, it's too late. Naruto begins to slip away, and all of his friends say their last goodbyes to him with tears in their eyes. Minato would smile and tell Naruto not to be afraid. He would go with him into the afterlife, where he, Minato, and Kushina could all live as the family they'd always wanted to be. Naruto smiles and says, That sounds... nice. Then he closes his eyes and passes away. And that is where our what if ends. Of course, we can always consider what would happen afterwards too. I would assume that Kakashi would more than likely become Hokage. Sasuke would likely return to the village and marry Sakura. Teneri would attack and I assume that Sasuke could beat him. And as for the likes of Momoshiki and Ishiki, well, I would assume that someone in the leaf, possibly Sasuke, maybe Kakashi, would absorb the Ten Tails to fight them and more than likely could win. Huh. I also had canon that Kakashi replaces his Sharingan with Naruto's Rinnegan. Imagine Kakashi with a Rinnegan. But anyway, what do you think of this? This was pretty fun to write, and I ended up listening to a sad mix of music when writing the ending there. Nothing beats Call of Silence and Sadness and Sorrow on a one hour loop when you're trying to feel the feels. Hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what you thought about this bittersweet ending, and if there was anything that you would have done differently. I'm interested to hear. Please feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it, and leave an F in the chat for Naruto. Subscribe if you haven't, and ring the bell so you know when we make more videos like this. Peace out, peeps.